When we're taking a look at the ambiguous case of the sine law, we can say that when solving a triangle, you must analyze the given measures and determine the number of triangles that can be actually constructed. If you're given the measure of three sides, of two sides, and an angle that's in between them, an angle, or sorry, two angles and a side that's in between them, or just two angles and any given side, then the triangle is uniquely defined. This means that given these scenarios, there's only going to be one set triangle that would actually be able to be created. If you're given two sides and an angle opposite of one of the sides, then the ambiguous case may occur. So, for the ambiguous case, that means that you're given two sides of a triangle, A and B, and you're given an angle that is opposite to the shorter of the two sides. If it's a longer than, if it's uh, opposite to the longer one, there's only going to be one possible triangle you can create anyways. So it has to be the shorter of the two. And we can see that given that information, there are three possible outcomes. Either the shorter side length is equal to the height of what would occur with the right triangle then there's going to be only one right triangle you can create. The shorter side length is going to be smaller than the height of the triangle. That means that no triangle can be drawn. It's not going to be mathematically possible and you're just going to wind up with errors. Or you can have it where the shorter side length is going to wind up being longer than the height. And then either the shorter side length could swing inwards and it's going to create this obtuse angle. Or the shorter side length could swing outwards and create this acute angle. And this is the unique situation that you're in. In this case, there's actually two possible triangles that can be created given the exact same information. Because either I'm gonna wind up with an obtuse angle for B and then a much smaller angle for C, or I can have an acute angle for B and a larger angle for C which means that the two angles and the side length of C are going to, as we can see here, change drastically. If it is a obtuse angle for B, then C is going to be very short. If it's an acute angle for B, then C is going to be considerably longer. So, if we are putting this into practice, then I'm going to say if I have triangle ABC where the angle of A is 125 degrees, side length A is going to be 27, and side length B is going to be 14. Well, the side length that I know, which is opposite the angle that I know, side length A in this case is bigger then side length B, which means there is only one possible triangle. And the triangle would look something like this. where I'm going to have A, B, and C. Actually, let's do it the other way. And I'm going to say that this is going to be 14 centimeters, this is going to be 27 centimeters, and this is going to be 125 degrees.
for example, B, I can see that A is less than B, and I know the angle opposite A. So in this case, I'm going to have the angle A which is going to be 50 degrees. I'm going to have side length B is going to be 20 centimeters and then I'm going to have a possible side length A which is going to be 15 centimeters. Well now I'm going to solve for what my actual height would be in here. If this was a right angle triangle, then I could say that sine of 50 would equal the height divided by 20 which means that the height is going to equal 20 times sine 50 or 15.3 centimeters. Well, as you can tell, if the right angle height or the altitude of this is 15 or 15.3 and the side length of A is only 15, doesn't matter which way it swings, it's never going to be able to make contact here. There is no possible triangle. Side length A is not long enough to create any triangle. In the last case, I have an angle of 30 degrees, I have A is 13, and I have B is going to be 21. So, I'm going to say that A is going to be 30, B is going to be 21, I'm going to start by solving for my height, and I'm going to say that the height is going to equal 21 times sine of 30, which is 10.5. Now, because the value of A is longer than that, the value of A is 13, then that means that there's going to be two possibilities. Either it could swing in or it could swing out. I could wind up having it where A comes in and B is going to be a obtuse angle or I could have it where it's going to swing out and B would be an acute angle. So either I could have this triangle or I could have this triangle. Which means because A is less than B but A is bigger than H, there are two possible triangles.